Today I'm going to show you how to use a softbox and a gel in a very unexpected and very creative way. Lindsay Adler here, and recently I was in my studio playing around with the things I love most, lighting and beauty photography. And my makeup artist presented me with this beautiful look, the bright blue graphic makeup. And so of course that told me I needed to be able to introduce some bit of that color and blue into the scene. So this is the image I came up with, but I wanna show you that I actually was probably using light in a way you really wouldn't expect. So let's take a look at the gear that I used and how I used it. All right, so let's take a look first at my main light. Main light that I'm using is over here on the left-hand side. It is a light with a grid, and a grid fundamentally focuses the light. I didn't have to have a grid here. I could have used a bare bulb, but what's important for you to realize is that I used hard light. What hard light would do would give me really defined shadows. I could also overexpose a bit to give me a little bit paler, uh, more high contrast look to the skin. But next, this is where the creativity comes into play, is that background. You can see behind her that I have a softbox. It's a three by four foot softbox here. And on it, there is a cyan gel. Now, you can actually see what's going on in the behind the scenes image. With that softbox right up against her back, what it does is it gives me a pure white background. But when the light hits the subject, with that cyan gel, it actually lights the side of her jaw and her neck with that blue light, bringing in the blue of the makeup. So it looks like there's multiple rim lights, one on either side, but in fact, it's a single softbox directly behind her. If you looked at the original image, you might've thought two rim lights, maybe two lights on a white background, but really one light is achieving all of that. And this is one of my favorite tips and tricks, one of the things I love to do with gels because it is something that's unexpected, but it saves you a lot of time and money when it comes to gear. Now let's actually talk more about gear, specifically my camera. I'm using the Canon 5D Mark IV with a 180 millimeter macro lens. So that macro lens lets me get real nice and tight for a lot of detail that you could see in that final shot. So now I've explained to you what I've done for lighting, but I wanna show you what was achieved in camera versus post-processing. So let's pop over and see where I began. Now this is the image as it looked captured in camera. And as you can see, it's, it's kind of flat. And I am seeing that rich color of the blue behind her uh, on the jawline, but her skin, it doesn't have much pop and contrast. Uh, and also a little bit of the blue that cyan is actually hitting the diffusion material behind her. And so that background isn't quite as white as I'd want it to be. So my solution is to pop the contrast a lot, or really drag that contrast. And also I pop the highlights. And so this is what I had before retouching, but while I was working on my color grade. So in this case, I was shooting tethered. This is what I was achieving in Capture One. So straight out of camera, in Capture One. And honestly, the image looks really good here. I would be happy with it if that's you know, the image that I was going to post. But there's a few things I analyzed that I thought could be improved. Um, I don't think that the texture on the neck is really adding anything, especially since the skin on the face looks so smooth. I also think that the makeup, now that I blasted it with light, it's losing a little bit of the color on the edges and a little bit of the shape. So I know that I wanna make that really saturated and give it a better shape. Uh, and then I'm also looking a little bit at the eyebrows. Um, they're just a little bit messy. So I think that's something that I could improve to make it an overall cleaner image. So this is what I had in my Capture One processing. And then here is what was achieved in Photoshop. I think the biggest thing that you'll notice is really the neck, just cleaning it up to match the face. Now, it looks like a drastic change, but what it really is, is just a lot of little improvements to make the image cleaner, which of course is an important part of my style. I'm super pleased with how the image turned out because it fits the way that I love to shoot clean, bold, graphic, colorful beauty photography. And if you'd like to learn more creative tips and tricks about how to use color gels, I actually have an entire tutorial dedicated to this. It's called The Magic of Gels. If you'd like to see the gear used specifically for the creation of this image, it's listed in the description below. And of course, you can visit adorama.com for more. And if you'd like to see more of my tips and tricks and more of these photo deconstructions, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.